Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today, welcome to my reading vlog for my read-along of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. So before I get into um, a little reading vlog of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, um, I did just want to mention that The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow is the sequel to Natasha Pulley's first book, The Watchmaker of Fergo Street. Um, this video is going to be full of spoilers, um, both for The Watchmaker of Fergo Street and for The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. So if you haven't read both those books, um, this video is probably not for you, but if you have, welcome, please do stay. And today and over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a bit of a reading vlog of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. So today is Monday the 13th of June and I I have just finished reading the first six chapters of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. Um, I haven't actually been reading this physical copy, um, I've actually been listening to it on audiobook, um, which is a joy, and I'm really enjoying the audiobook experience so far, and it's just really nice to reread this one. I am really loving this. Six chapters in, um, lots of excitement. We know that Nathaniel and Mori are going to be going to Japan. We know that um, something has happened to Grace. Um, she is in Japan. She's being taken to um, do something sciencey somewhere, but we don't know what. Um, and everything is kind of intriguing. Um, we know there's complicated things going on um, between Russia and Japan, um, and the book is kind of setting up for a lot of the novel to take place um, in 19th century Japan, which is something that I really, really love about the Lost feature of Pepper Harrow and actually at the very end of chapter six we have also met Mrs Pepper Harrow and we're going to find out who she is um, and yeah I'm just loving this one so far it's so nice to like revisit the characters um, within this series especially really Thaniel and Kate and Maury. I feel like their relationship is done so well and the complexities of their relationship is just like so brilliantly drawn and so kind of like moving to read about and um, I think the kind of like uncertainty that Nathaniel feels about their relationship because they can't talk about it because it's illegal like I think I think the way that is done in the book is so well done I feel like the characterization just feels so real um, and I love Natasha Pony's writing very much too so hugely loving this so far and I'll check in again in a few days when I've read a bit more so I'm now up to chapter 15 of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, which I am just loving very, very much. Um, it is such a wonderful book. Um, I just feel like I find all the characters so intriguing and fantastic, um, and it's just such a joy to be with them again. So as we're up to now, um, Thaniel and Mori are in Japan. Um, they've met Mrs. Pepper Harrow, um, and she is a really interesting character. The Prime Minister of Japan is a very intriguing character. We're kind of not quite sure what's going on, and we're also having these strange incidences with ghosts which may or may not be ghosts I'm just finding it very excellent to read again I do like remember what is going on but it's been quite a while since I read it so I don't remember all the detail I also wanted to say how much I love the character of Six um, she is obviously in The Watchmaker of Filigree Street but she's a bit younger and she's a bit less kind of present um, and I feel like she's a really important character in The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow and I really like how she is done as well and obviously Faniel and Mori um, and their relationship and the kind of complexities around Mori's character and how much we do and don't know about him and how much his kind of clairvoyance allows him to be good or not um, I feel like that is done so well so yes yeah, still thoroughly enjoying rereading Pepper Harrow and I'll check in again soon Hello, so I am now up to chapter 17 of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow um, and just continuing to love it very much. I'm really enjoying stuff about like the civil service and like embassies um, during the 19th century because that's just something that I find really like really interesting. I really enjoyed the chapter where Faniel goes to the embassy um, and to like see inside what things are like there is really interesting. I also really like the um, the ghosts um, and how that's kind of done and um, I feel like that's just a really fun element and obviously because I do remember the ending and the kind of explanation of what's going on and um, I find that really fun and interesting too and I also feel like the um, moment where Faniel realises that Mori um, can remember his death because it might happen in the future and therefore Mori is like like it's really painful for him to be around Faniel I feel like that's just so moving and powerful I don't know I feel like Mori's clairvoyance um, in both The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow I love it because it's both kind of a plot engine and something that affects the plot um, of both books but also it's is something that makes both books like really poignant because there's lots of like really powerful exploration of like what it would do to you psychologically and emotionally to be able to see into possible futures um, and I just feel like 
that makes things sad things so powerful and um, so i really love that element in it too and yeah just thoroughly loving this book again so far and i will check in again soon so I've just finished chapter 28 of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. Lots and lots of drama. Um, Aradori has just been killed and Faneuil has been injured. Um, and there's just a lot happening. I feel like um, this point of the book is really climactic and dramatic and I really like it. And all the kind of sciencey supernatural stuff going on as well as all the um, political stuff going on is really interesting. I think I've mentioned already in this vlog um, how much I like the characterization of Six, but I also really like Faneuil and Six's relationship and I feel like their father-daughter bond um, is really well done and also the bond that Six has with um, Mori as well is really well done um, and the way their little kind of family operates I think is so well drawn um, but also how it operates um, and operates less well to a certain extent where Mori isn't there I think is well done too. Another like little detail I've really liked um, in this last couple of chapters is when like um, they're in the carriage accident and Faneuil like runs towards the um, horse because he's used to feeling safe because he's used to Mori always looking out for him. Mori isn't here now and he's not safe. And that like moment, um, I think is really powerful both because it like ups the stakes hugely, but also it's like a really like emotional moment of Faneuil realizing that Mori isn't like looking out for him anymore. Um, and what does that mean as well? What's the significance of that? What's happened to Mori? Um, it's just so interesting and I really, really love it. The audiobook is fantastic as well. Thomas Judge does such a brilliant um, job of the narration. He's the same person who narrated the audiobook I listened to of The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. And it's just been a very wonderful experience so far. So looking forward to cracking on um, and reading some more of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. So I'm now up to chapter 34 of The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow and continuing to really enjoy it. Um, I love the sections kind of in the prison um, with uh, what Pepper Harrow is doing um, and what's happening to Mori and kind of the, the mystery around what is happening or has happened to Mori, uh, which I think is fantastic. Um, but also Faneuil and the ghosts um, in Tokyo and him going up the mountain and everything that's going on there is so interesting. Like the science um, and the kind of like supernatural science I suppose and um, behind what Grace is investigating um, is really interesting um, and it's nice to kind of see Grace and Thaniel kind of meet again um, and their kind of complicated relationship. I really like the bit where Thaniel is kind of like reassessing his assessment of Grace um, because of the kind of complicated um, dynamic between them in the past and there's just so much about it that I really really love. There's so much drama and excitement and the twists and turns of the plot is really good and I know what happens in the end but like I'm still excited to like uncover it again. I really enjoy the kind of idea of ghosts at future ghosts and the idea that Maury can kind of watch people from the past um, and what he might know about what's going into the future. The idea that all of this big mess um, and even him being in prison is all some part of some trap and that he actually knows what is going on. Um, but then at the same time, does he? Because um, we're aware that his future has been a little bit blurry for him. It's just such an interesting setup and it's so like complicated and, and so fun um, and strange in such a wonderful way. So I'm very much loving that. Um, I'm also just really enjoying like seeing Fanny or like move around Japan and go to different places um, and kind of the exploration of um, what it's like being a foreigner in Japan at this point in time, but also like all the different people he meets um, and the different landscapes he moves through, I find it really, really interesting. So I'm just really loving this very much again. Um, and yeah, looking forward to um, cracking on and getting ever nearer to the end. Um, and that's all for now. And I'll check in again soon. Hello again, I've just finished reading The Lost Future of Peb Harrow um, and I absolutely loved it. It was such a joy to reread um, and such a wonderful book. There's so much I love about the ending. I feel like it's very dramatic um, and climactic and I feel like um, Chikiko Peb Harrow's ending is done really well. I also really like it because like the title of the book is The Lost Future of Peb Harrow and obviously throughout the whole book we know what what futures are and how people see futures and how Mori can see other people's futures. And so the fact that her future is lost from the title of the book. Like actually the title of the book kind of tells you from the beginning that she's gonna die, but you don't really clock it until she does. Um, and I feel like that moment is really powerful. And I also love the ending between um, Thaniel and Mori because I feel like there's so much like relationship stuff that um, they never talk about, which is kind of explored really well in the end. I feel like possibly my favorite moment across both books, both um, The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow and The Watchmaker of Filgris Street is the bit at the end of this book where Thaniel and Mori are talking um, and basically none of them have really realised the extent to which the other care about each other um, and when they finally like come to that realisation I just think it's a really like beautiful moment and conversation between them. Mori was looking at him as if he'd never seen him before. You were worried. 
I didn't mean for it to get in the way like that. I... About me, Laurie said gradually. Thaniel choked. Are you telling me you didn't factor in me wanting to look for you? That cannot have been a faint chance. Everything was faint when I was putting this together. I had to guess. So what, you thought I just tolerated you for the sake of a free room? Maury didn't laugh. Isn't that what impoverished young artists usually do with old millionaires who fall in love with them? Thaniel wanted to splinter into pieces. Part of him sank into a relief like he'd never felt before, but the rest was so shocked that the relief was nearly drowned out. Every conversation they'd ever had rushed across the front of his mind. Suddenly, Maury's endless quietness looked much more like grace and deference than indifference. I don't tolerate you. I can't breathe when you're not here. I can't think. I can't write music properly. I spend my whole bloody life waiting for the post. I never said because I thought you didn't want to hear it. We don't talk about any of it. I feel like it's really well done, partly because it feels very believable in terms of their characters, um, and also because Maury knows what might happen in the future. So to a certain extent, he has like all this knowledge, but actually, although he knows what people might do, he doesn't know what people feel. So in a way, like, I feel like Faniel thinks that Maury is all knowing when he's actually very much not. Um, so I feel like that is really well done. And I also think it's a really clever way of Natasha Pulley kind of exploring how LGBTQ plus relationships at this time were complicated because people didn't have the framework to discuss them because it wasn't culturally and socially talked about um, and therefore they didn't have like the context and the words and the framework um, to actually discuss those kind of relationships. So I feel like that's really well done as well. I also love the final scene with Daniel kind of um, conducting the orchestra and him kind of um, having made a success of his kind of music career, I suppose. And the fact that um, Arthur Sullivan can kind of um, see music in the same way that he can and how Sullivan has like recognised Mori from Daniel's piece of music. I really love that. I feel like it's such a beautiful, nice touch. And there's just so much I love about the ending of this book. In general, I just really, really love this book. It's interesting because when I first read The Watchmaker of Fergus Street, um, I loved it so much and I still do. It's one of my favourite books of all time. And I didn't think it needed a sequel. And then when the sequel came out, I was like, does it, does it really need a sequel? And then I read it and I loved it so much. And it was such a joy to reread it as well now because I just love these characters so much and I feel so at home with them and I feel like they're such well-drawn characters. And even though The Watchmaker of Fergus Street does work super well without The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, I feel like this book does add so much to like the depth of the characters as well as kind of exploring um, the kind of magic and science stuff in a really fun way um, and looking at a really interesting other section of late 19th century history and I just love it hugely. It's just such a joy in so many ways and it was just yeah an absolute delight to read. So I finished that clip and then I thought of two other things I wanted to say about the ending. Um, so two other things I really love about the ending. Um, one is the fact that everything that's happened in the book, all of this chaos and, and strange connivances that we never knew what Mori was doing it for and Mori wasn't really sure what he was doing it for. And um, in the end, it turns out that it was all so that someone could accidentally invent a microscope which um, is going to result in a cure to tuberculosis which is going to result in being able to save Thaniel's life. Like that's basically the ending of the book. Um, that's the suggestion that this is what Mori was doing it all for. And there is actually like a pretty big hint earlier. Um, he does talk about wanting to invent a microscope earlier, um, well, earlier on in the book. Um, but I certainly didn't realise on my first reread that that was why. I feel like it's such a wonderful, like, fun thing that everything that was going on in this book, all of the drama and chaos and complications was all so that a microscope could be invented earlier. Um, it was just Maury, like, literally moving heaven and earth and, like, rearranging the world in order to invent this thing which could save Thaniel's life. And of course, it's not just about Thaniel. Like Thaniel says to Maury, um, if there's a cure, you'll have saved hundreds of thousands more people than you hurt arranging it. And then next comes, like always with any kind of praise, Maury didn't look like he wholly knew what to do with it and only nodded, well, see you soon. And I feel like the reason Maury doesn't know what to do with that praise is partly because he doesn't, um, but also partly because he didn't really do it to save hundreds of thousands of people, he did it to save Daniel's life, um, and I just really love that. Because I feel like the thing that I really like about both The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow is that there's lots of magic and science going on, and there's lots of really complicated plotting and really interesting adventure stuff happening, but actually, like, they are love stories, um, and I feel like they're very good love stories, and I feel like the way the love story element interacts with everything else is just really, really fun. And the other thing I really like in the ending, which I wanted to mention, um, is when they're talking about Daniel synesthesia and Maury is like really intrigued that Arthur um, Sullivan recognised him from the music. Maury says to Daniel that it's extraordinary and Daniel says thanks but it's not a skill it's just how I see and I really like that because I feel like it makes a really interesting um, connection with Maury's clairvoyance because that is how he sees that is how he remembers that is 
you know, his experience of the world. Um, and Daniel also has a slightly different experience of the world through his synesthesia. Obviously, it's not to the same extent. Um, but I feel like the little connection drawn between them there is really interesting. Anyway, I think that is actually all I have to say now, possibly. Um, so yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed reading along with the Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you read it, I absolutely loved my reread. Um, and yeah, I love Natasha Pulley so much. One of my favourite authors and this was a real joy to reread. Um, so at some point next year, I will do another read along of another Natasha Pulley book. I think we'll do the Bedlam Stacks next. And then the year after, we'll do the Kingdoms and the year after, we'll do the Half-Life of Valerie Kay. The Half-Life of Valerie Kay has just come out. Um, if you like Natasha Pulley's books, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a fantastic read. And I think I'll probably stagger read alongs out for the rest of her books over the next few years. But I thought I would just do The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow in the same year as The Watchmaker of Filigree Street as it is a direct sequel to it and yeah i just really 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 enjoyed the last future of pepper harrow and i hope you did too and that's all for now thanks so much for watching and i'll be back very soon with another bookish video mm -hmm.